Today we will synthesize cyclohexanone by the oxidation of cyclohexanol using sodium dichromate. Please take a note of this important warning before attempting this synthesis and do it on your own risk. Chemicals that you will need for this synthesis are 25.5 grams of sodium dichromate, 22 grams that is 12 milliliters of 97% sulfuric acid, 12.5 grams of cyclohexanol and approximately 50 milliliters of diethyl ether. Place a 500 milliliter beaker on a hot plate syrup with a steering bar inside. Transfer 25.5 grams of sodium dichromate to the beaker. I use the powder funnel to transfer the solid as I have clumsy hands that spill everything while transferring. With the steering turned on, 125 milliliters of distilled water was added. Next, 12 milliliters of the 97% sulfuric acid was added. It has to be added very slowly with continuous stirring. The addition is exothermic and the solution clears up quickly owing to the increased heat. This produces chromic acid or chromium trioxide in situ in the beaker. Before the next step, adequately cool the chromic acid mixture to the room temperature. Now, 12.5 grams of cyclohexanol was taken in a 250 ml conical flask and placed on a hot plate stirrer with a stirring bar inside. With the stirring turned on, the chromic acid mixture was added completely as one part to the cyclohexanol. Immediately, a visible color change from bright orange to dark green is observed. Oxidation of cyclohexanol to cyclohexanone is carried out along with the reduction of the hexavalent chromium to the trivalent state, thus the green color. The reaction is also exothermic, so a thermometer was placed to monitor the temperature, so that the reaction proceeds at a temperature of 55 to 60 degrees C. If the temperature goes above 60 degrees C, sufficient cooling was applied to bring down the temperature. Temperature shouldn't go below 55 degrees C or above 60 degrees C. When the temperature no longer increases above 60 degrees C without external cooling, the reaction mixture was let to stir again for another 30 minutes. Then a 250 ml 3 neck round bottom flask was set for downward steam distillation. One of the side necks was opened and some boiling chips were added. Then the mixture was charged to the round bottom flask using a glass funnel. Water pump was turned on and circulated in the condenser. The product cyclohexanone will distill out along with water vapor. Heating mantle was cranked up to maximum heat and the distillation was started. Soon the vapor front started climbing with the cyclohexanone and it was collected in the receiving flask. Distillation was continued until about 75 milliliters of the distillate was collected. The distillate will be seen in two layers with the lower aqueous layer and the upper oily layer containing the desired product cyclohexanone. The mixture was then saturated with approximately 15 grams of sodium chloride. This would help drive out any cyclohexanone dissolved in aqueous phase. Now a separatory funnel was clamped and closed and the mixture was poured into it. Don't forget to close the knob of the separatory funnel before adding the substance, as that could be the end of your whole project. Allow it to stand undisturbed for a few minutes and let the layer separate. Always make sure you have removed the cap of the separatory funnel before opening the knob. The lower aqueous layer was added back to the separatory funnel and approximately 15 milliliters of diethyl ether was added on the top. The separatory funnel was then capped, shaked with frequent venting to release the pressure built inside. It was placed back on the stand and the layers were allowed to separate. Ether formed the top layer. The lower aqueous layer was again taken up in the separatory funnel and a second rinsing with diethyl ether was done. Again, 15 milliliters of diethyl ether was used. All the ether washings were added together with the initial cyclohexanone layer and some 3 grams of anhydrous sodium sulfate was added to dry the mixture. A flash distillation was then carried out to remove the diethyl ether. The cyclohexanone had a boiling point of approximately 155 degrees C. Somehow it was finding very difficult to distill over even after using aluminium foil around the distillation flask and even an oil bath. Finally, I decided to use my heat gun and it quickly boiled and distilled over.
In the distilling flask, I was left with some dark red colored material. In the receiving flask, I got the nice crystal clear cyclohexanone. The final yield of pure cyclohexanone that I obtained was 6.6 grams, that is 7 milliliters, which is very close to the yield of 8.3 grams mentioned in the literature. So that's all in this video. These are my Patreon supporters who are financially supporting me so that I am able to purchase new equipments and chemicals required for doing new videos. You can also support me via Patreon or PayPal. The links of both of them are in the description. If you can support me via the Super Thanks tab, the tab is provided below the video. Thanks for watching. Do subscribe to the channel and click on the bell button for notifications regarding my future videos.